Welcome back to FNTV at MWC 25. I am Steve Saunders. Well, today I'm joined by Hemant Sampath, VP of Engineering at leading wireless solutions vendor Qualcomm, Michael Dudonet from Keysight Technologies, a test and measurement company originally spun out of Agilent, and of course, Kyung Moon, principal analyst and mobile uh, expert at Mobile Experts LLC. Well, is it too soon to talk about 6G? I don't think so. It's one of the big stories at this year's show, but I also want to talk to our experts about distributed computing and XR and the other tech that's dictating the evolution of our wireless industry. Hemant, welcome. Um, how do you envision the role of distributed computing uh, in the evolution of wireless technologies? Well, thanks for the question. You know, pretty soon we're going to have a world where you have AR glasses, like the one that I'm wearing, talking to a 5G, 6G enabled phone, a puck, a watch. And that's going to change the way how we interface with the world. And distributed compute is a key technology. Because to get all day use of this uh, AR glass, you need to take the compute and distribute it to your puck, to your phone, or even to an edge server, either over 5G or over Wi-Fi. Mm. And that's how you're going to get all day use and also seamless user experience. So that's going to be in the form of a teeny tiny processor? Yes, you're going to have processors. That's a technical term, by the way. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, um, yeah you're going to have processors uh, on the phone, on the glass, on the watch, and edge servers. Mm. And your large language models and AI models and perception and rendering, they're all going to be split across these devices mm. for a seamless user experience and for an all-day use. What about the, uh, let me ask you, Kyun, um, what about the data storage component of it, uh, apart from the processing? Does that sit? in the uh, end user device or at the edge of the network or uh, would my glasses or, or, or my tablet or whatever it is that I'm using be uh, communicating back to data storage in a centralized location? Yeah, I mean, as a former engineer, I like to say it depends, right? So you're going to need <laughs> information, your know, communication and computing resources, but also on the devices as well as depending on the requirements on the form factors. Mm. But we would imagine there would be a lot of processing and a lot of storage a lot of interaction between the different uh, uh, devices and form factors. Mm. I think so you will have both uh, residency on the devices where it makes sense, but also on the, on the edge devices, but also in a lot of it in the uh, data centers. Yeah. In the core. So, um, Michael, uh, you know, as a, as a test and measurement vendor, uh, is this an exciting opportunity? Uh, you're going to be having to uh, create networks or analyze networks and equipment which are supporting XR. I imagine that's quite a challenge, isn't it? Correct, yeah, that's a very interesting challenge. I think we're definitely working on that. And I think when you look at how the things will be distributed in the system, there will be trade-offs to make, right? And all these trade-offs, you're better off doing that when you know. And mm. to know, you need to run experimentation, you need to measure things. Mm. And once you have measured then, you can try to take profit decision, right? You can train an AI system and look, if I do this, this is what happens. And then basically that's where you have this information coming from. You need to measure. Hmm. Do you think, Hemant, that this is primarily a uh, consumer technology, 6G, or do you think that there are other industrial applications, for example, which are going to turn out to be a lot more important? Oh, it's going to span uh, across the entire range of use cases from consumer, such mm. as immersive communication, which can also be used for business and enterprise application, mm. as well as the broader 6G is also going to be about the broader operational efficiency of a network via the digital twin, and as well as AI native networks, wherein the RAN or the radio access network and the devices adapt uh, by using AI to give the user the best user experiences. Mm. Kyung, do you uh, have any particular applications that uh, we can't do now, but when 6G arrives, we will be enabled by them? Are there any thoughts you have on what you're particularly excited about? Well, actually, I'm excited about the, all the existing applications we have today. Okay. Like, you know, fixed wireless access is a good use of the 5G. Mm. And also, we, you know, we talk about 6G in the context of XR, extended radio, the, radio, the, the glass that he has. I mean, those kind of devices will require a lot more bandwidth and a lot more capabilities, not just on the computing, but also on the connectivity as aspect as well. Mm. Michael, what about you? Do, you? do you see any exciting applications coming up? Yeah, personally, 
I would go on immersive communication. I, I really would love to see the person I'm talking to in 3D in front of me. Mm. I, that would be really awesome. It facilitate really the human interaction with people you don't see often, right? I mean, Mobile World Congress is a great show. You see everybody at the same time. Oh, it's one year I've seen you, right? Mm. That feeling with immersive, you can really get rid of it. Now, of course, from a business perspective, that's just one side of the business. And I agree there will be plenty of other applications that are important mm. that needs to be verified to, to, to make it. Mm. Fantastic. I know a lot of carriers are sort of pushing back on talking about 6G, but listening to you guys, it's clear that they need to be paying some attention to it uh, right now. Thank you all very much for explaining uh, the importance of this new technology. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.